This is my new writing notebook starting from January 2024. This is my previous one, which I started in September. This is a lot thicker than my new one. So I expect my new one will probably take me about a month to six weeks to complete. They're both the same make. If you can make it out there, it says M. Shoy. There you go. This one is 100 GSM, whereas this one was 120 GSM. And they've both got hard covers, both exactly the same size. They've both got page numbers and they're both lined paper. The only other difference that I can see is the beginning, where this one has room for content, page numbers and so on. And it also has, at the back of the book, it's got some perforated pages, but it's not all the way through. I thought it was all the way through, so I'm rather pleased about that. And the beauty of these books are that they lie flat. So there's none of that annoying bump that hits your hand as it's moving across the page. I bought mine from Amazon. I think I got it in a pack of two. I got this colour and a black one. I'll put the link in the description box below anyway, if you are interested in getting one for yourself. So this is what I do when I'm starting my new journal. First of all, I take all the, the bits off. As you, it didn't come with this in it. <laughs> but I wrote this a couple of days ago in my other journal and I thought I would really like that in my new journal as a reminder of what it is. And it says, my journal is a deliberately relaxed space where I can be myself, where I can question myself, where I can motivate and sometimes berate myself, where I allow myself to be scared and allow myself to dream big. And this is actually a quote from my workbook, Journaling Your Goals, which you can purchase through my website. And I was going through this a few days ago just to remind myself of, of how I use my notebook and why I use a writing notebook because it's coming up to January 2024 and I just wanted to remind myself of why my writing notebook is so special to me. So this is going to go on the front page here. So I see it every time I open it up. And if you see from my previous journal, I have put some paper on the outside and written writing journal on it as well. So I will possibly do something like that. I have a feeling there will be some washi tape used across the front. I know there are some people that, that worry about messing up a new journal. I don't have that problem because I see my journal as an extension of what's going on in my head and sometimes what's going on in my head is a big fat mess. I see my journal as an external hard drive for my brain and it's there as a tool to help my brain. So my brain is obviously the primary, what is it? It's, it's primary attribute that I have. This is where I have my ideas. My ideas always stem from my brain. The notebook doesn't dream them up. I dream them up. My brain dreams them up. So it has to help my brain. Otherwise, what's the point? If I keep this pristine, it's not helping my brain, is it? And so sometimes I deliberately make it messy right from the get-go. So I, it's a reminder to myself that I can scribble things out. I can make a mess in there. I can write ridiculous thoughts down. I can write ridiculous ideas down because sometimes you just don't know what's going to come out from that. And if it's a ridiculous idea, but it's in your head and nothing else can grow because of this ridiculous idea, then write the ridiculous idea down in here and then you have space in your brain to allow new ideas to grow. So I'm a big advocate for making a mess in your writing notebook 
And to prove that, I am just going to get my coffee. There we go. And we'll also, we'll have a splat for good measure because now <laughs> the notebook has started. It's, it's no longer pristine. I've made a mess in it. So I can get over whatever issues I have with keeping it pristine and just start writing. Then the next thing I do is write the date that I start this. So this will be January. Now... I'm not especially neat it's probably gone over the edges but that's deliberate well it's not deliberate it's just the way I am but I don't worry about it because like I was saying I can't get precious about my journal it's there to as a tool I like to stick washi tape in because I find that quite therapeutic I like to decorate my pages. I like to stick paper in. If I give you an example from my, you know, even if I'm writing a quote, I will just put some washi tape around it just to make it stand out a little bit more. I like to write and color the, the, the writing in again to make it stand out a little bit more, but it's primarily there as a reminder for me. And then I like to put washi tape up the sides of the pages so that on the edges it looks like that because that gives me a lot of joy. Clifton Strengths, someone was asking me about what my strengths were on YouTube. And so I went and looked in the um, Gallup report that I had and, and what it said. And so I wrote that down so next time I don't have to scroll through all my emails to find it and maybe that might become an essay or something that I write about in more detail at some point but it's just collecting all this stuff that that goes on in your head and then just having a little bit of fun with it Okay, we've had an accident just to share that not everything is perfect <laughs> on YouTube, Instagram, social media in general. This is my oh, good job. I've got the radiator on. So I've already put one lot on there to dry. Oh my God. All right. I'll go and get something to wipe it up with. Right, so now I've, fin <laughs> I've finished fannying about with the outside. What I'm going to do now, and this is pretty much all I do to set up my new journal. The date, I've got a quote there. And then on the first few pages, I am going to take this journal and go through it and make a list of all the good ideas from there or the good thoughts or whatever from there and transfer them into my new journal. And I do this because I'm a big believer in rereading or writing journals. Now, I know with things like morning pages and, and what have you, they say don't reread it. Or at least I think they, they say that. I've not read The Artist's Way yet. That's starting in January on my Substack as part of the Nonfiction Book Club. So if you're interested, do come along over to Substack. I'll leave a link there below. That was a little, 
little um, segue into my, my, my book club there. But I'm a big believer in rereading through our writing journals because we put so much information in there. We empty our head of all our good thoughts, ideas, ridiculous thoughts even, and, and so on and so forth. And we need to look back. And I often find there are connections and there may be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pages, whatever, between a connection. But there are connections there nevertheless. And you you find that there may be an idea for a book in there. There may be an idea for the direction you want to go with your creativity in there. Or at least the beginnings of an idea. You just don't know until you read it all the way through as as one you you don't know where the connections are because guaranteed you write things down and then you completely forget about it and there may be stuff that you've written in your journal that you really can't remember writing and you think but that that relates to something else that's going on in your life or with your dreams or with your ambitions or with your ideas or whatever and you suddenly you've got a connection there and you start to see a slightly bigger picture. So that's why I really, really recommend going through and writing a list in your new journal of the the things that really stand out for you. So this is one of my old notebooks from October 2022. So you can see how I I've decorated the the inside of this notebook and then if you open it up here's a list with the page numbers of all oh this is from one notebook and this is from the other notebook of all of my what I thought were good ideas and that I could expand upon either as an essay a book or even as a direction to go in I completely transformed my work and my writing life from 2018 when I started journaling properly. For some time I'd felt like my time was running out and I was incredibly frustrated at my lack of progress on my creative journey. Don't get me wrong, I was productive but I wasn't focusing on the projects I really wanted to focus upon. I was wasting a lot of time on Instagram. I was creating for YouTube, though my heart wasn't in it, and giving myself such a hard time for not sticking to a project and seeing it through to its completion. And so began my relationship, out of absolute sheer frustration with my writing journal. And this is when the reason for my unhappiness and lack of direction became clear. I realised what my purpose was to help other women who, like me, lacked confidence, direction or technical skills which held them back from pursuing their creative path. By identifying my purpose, my goals and my projects then became clearer. I have to be honest with myself. I have to acknowledge all these thoughts that are at the periphery of my mind within my journal. Thoughts you might not want to acknowledge or say out loud. They're all put in there. My journal is a deliberately relaxed space where I can be myself, where I can question myself, where I can motivate and sometimes berate myself, where I allow myself to be scared and allow myself to dream big. And that is why I love my writing journal.